and welcome to today's physics tutorial. I know a lot of you wanted me to make some physics lectures, so I decided to, you know, in my spare time on top of uni and everything else I have to do, to um, just make a, like a short tutorial on Lenz's Law in particular, because I know that that is an area that a lot of people don't really understand, and I know that it's something that I actually struggled with when I was doing Year 12 myself. So I thought that that would be very useful for you. Okay, so let's get started. Now, Lenz's Law. Let's have a look at Lenz's Law and basically what it is. Okay, so Lenz's Law is basically a way of inducing current. Okay, so if you have a simple wire, if you have a simple wire and it's just in a constant magnetic field, like so, imagine four magnetic fields are going in, streams are going into that particular um, wire, what you have is um, you won't have any particular current being, you know, going around in that wire because the magnetic flux and the magnetic field is uh, the same, it's constant. Okay, so what Lenz's law is looking at is it's looking at how when you start changing the magnetic field going inside or outside the object even, if you start changing that, how um, the current, what kind of current is going to be produced? Because Lenz's law, it's based on uh, Newton's law in a sense. In a sense that for every reaction, there's an equal and opposite, uh, for every action, there's an equal and opposite reaction. So in Lenz's law, basically the action that we ch change is the amount of you know, magnetic field going in and out of the system. Okay, so that's going to produce a reaction, which is actually the current. And we're going to be investigating how that current, uh, what, which direction it flows in, and how we know to tell which direction it flows in. Okay, so let's have a look at this particular wire. In this case, the magnetic flux, the flux is constant. So because flux isn't changing, um, the field is also constant, so you actually do not have, in a system that has constant field and constant flux, you have no current being generated. Okay, so that wire does not have anything. No I, I standing for current. Okay, so um, let's have a look. Imagine that this wire is actually elastic and can expand. So imagine that you decided to uh, change that wire into making it like much bigger okay and imagine that the flux still remained relatively the same that field sorry relatively the same okay now in this particular case although the field is the same the magnetic flux is no longer the same because you have a much bigger area in this particular case than this one so area is larger okay and because area is larger what um, there was is a change of flux okay so what the system is going to want to do this system here is it's going to want to get back to that same original magnetic flux that it had here but obviously in this case it's a much bigger area so what needs to happen you've kind of like diluted the amount of magnetic field going into that particular um, area. So it's less concentrated in a sense, if you very chemistry based. So that's less concentrated magnetic field. And so what the system is going to need to do, it's going to need to make more of the magnetic field going into the system. Okay, so it's going to have to generate more magnetic field. And using your right hand grip rule, okay, um, what you need to do is because you know that more magnetic field needs to go inside into that system okay it's inside because you can see that these are the back of arrows arrows representing the magnetic field if it's just a dot the arrow is coming towards you if it's a cross the arrow you're looking at it from behind okay so because you are generating more magnetic field use your right hand don't use your left, that's really easy to mistake. Use your right hand and you know you're generating more magnetic field. 
So in that case, you need to go inside with your right hand into the actual um, inner part of the circle. You grip the wire, so you grip that wire, and you can see your thumb points the direction of the current. So the current that's induced actually goes that way. The current is known is going in a clockwise way. So because of the area, because the area is larger, um, you need to generate more flux or more field, and that induces that makes a current. Okay, so that's a way of generating current, which is very useful for um, obviously electrical engineers and yeah people in industry so let's have a look at another case let's have a look at case two let's assume that we have a constant uh, field let's just assume this a constant field magnetic field here remember the magnetic field is going into the board okay and let's say that we have an object that we're going to move through that now let's just say we're going to move a square object through this field, okay? So in the first step, right now, there is no current being generated in that wire because it's not really changing flux, it's a steady magnetic field, the air is not changing, um, even if it did, there's no magnetic field there, so it wouldn't make a difference, okay? Now as that object moves closer, as that object actually moves into, into the magnetic field, so it moves that way, okay? As you can see, it didn't have a magnetic field before, and now you have introduced a magnetic field going into the space of this object. So, because of that, uh, by Lenz's law, it's going to want to oppose that magnetic field. It's going to want to point the opposite way because it didn't have a magnetic field before. Now it's starting to get one. So the system is actually going to want to oppose that. And the only um, way to oppose a field going in is by generating a field coming out. Remember, a field coming out is going to be a dot. And remember that that dot is going towards you. Okay, so... To figure that one out, because it's going towards us, well, our fingers have to pull, um, have to point towards, you know, towards us. So um, we wrap our hand around the wire. We wrap our hand around the wire, and we can see which direction the current is going in. If I actually could, you know, grab this blue ink and wrap my hand, the current will be going that way. So if the current goes that way, that's actually anti-clockwise. So first it's anti-clockwise, clockwise, eventually you'll get this entire system into the magnetic field. So eventually you'll get to a point where that, where it's constant, you know, the magnetic field is actually constant, it's immersed completely, the object is immersed completely in the magnetic field and the flux is not changing, it is constant. So that's in the middle here, where the object is in the middle, if I just get rid of this object for now. Okay, if it's in the dead center of your, of your magnetic field, then there's no change of flux. And since there's no change of flux, there's actually no generation of current. So here, anti-clockwise current. Here we have no generation of current. And as we get to the end, as we get to the very end and it, the object's actually coming out, as you can see there's in that particular case, there's a reduction of flux going in, okay? So we have to um, make more flux going in. So you're losing that flux going in, so the system's going to want to generate more flux that goes into this object. And because of that, again, your fingers need to point in, into the object and your thumb points in the direction of the current. So as you can see, it's going that way. The current's going that way. So it has changed to clockwise. Okay, so that's basically an application of Lenz's Law. I hope that helped. Um, I recommend that you check out the website. I've been working hard to put a lot of articles there, and there's also a forum if you want to sign up. 
and yeah have a great day